Yo, yo, let's cut the, cut the music, cut the music. Adame says, I'm good. Love your work. Your reels have helped me a lot. I appreciate it, bro. That's what I do it for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. Let's see here. All right, so today we're talking about the influence of 90s catalogs on graphic design. And so what are catalogs? Catalogs, they're commonly tucked between newspapers. Catalogs were produced by both fashion magazines and retail brands serving as a source of style inspiration and a shopping guide, typically featuring editorial style spreads, product listings, and advertisements. Catalogs were around before Pinterest. You know, this is all pre-Pinterest. Um, so believe it or not, you know, they influenced the fashion trends and kind of helped bring fashion to a broader audience. You know, Pinterest wasn't around back then. Pinterest didn't jump on the scene until like 2010 or like 2012. And so before that, you know, there was... I guess catalogs you know not to say that's like the only form of inspiration but uh for fashion but definitely uh one of the few um so one of the most common ways that people receive fashion catalogs was through direct mail um retailers and fashion brands would send these catalogs directly to customers homes often targeting those who had made previous purchases or uh signed up for mailing lists in stores or via a cell phone and so some of the first catalogs um ever produced was um this one from uh aldous pius um and he made a, a catalog of a bunch of latin classic uh songs and whatnot and then there's william lucas who made a catalog specifically about like seeds or something like that and then there's a uh, william princess's uh william prince's fruit tree catalog and then tiffany and co with the blue book that came around in like 1845 and then um the two big ones uh that kind of were like at the forefront of kind of catalogs were the Montgomery Ward and, and Sears. And the Montgomery Ward specifically, I think the ones before that, um, that I kind of just mentioned, um, the, the ones before that, they were more focused on, you know, they had their own kind of set of products, uh, you know, not ranging kind of, they, they weren't kind of doing the Amazon thing, you know, kind of how Amazon has like pretty much all you can ask for, you know what I mean? But um, Aldous P.S., I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but, you know, he was focused on one specific thing. William Lucas, with his seed catalog, he was focused on one specific thing, as well as Tiffany & Co. But the Montgomery Ward, you know, they, um, they were, they didn't just focus on, like, household items or anything, or just one thing in particular. They were, they, they were doing a lot. Um, so you could buy appliances through them, just all kinds of stuff. And then um, kind of Sears, Sears kind of Richard Warren Sears is his actual name. So, you know, the company is named after him. Um, he started off selling watches and then kind of later on expanded. And then Sears went on to be one of the cornerstone brands to run with the catalog that would last throughout the 90s. And then here are some common styles and motifs um, within catalogs. So often you'll see grid systems, uh, two, three, and four column grids, um, so that you can kind of maximize the amount of product listings that you have on one page. This here is an East Bay, um, an East Bay catalog uh, page. How many? How many of y'all remember East Bay Design Studio? What's good with you? I used to get East Bay catalogs to the crib all the time, bro. And then um, there's framing, and so you know, using framing as a way to call attention to specific products or um you know just using it as a as a way to bring attention to um you know an, an image of some sort or like the way that they have it here um they're calling attention to the models here and then also full length shots um is a common motif especially found within Delia's I want to say Delia's so bad I feel like Delia's should be the correct term for it but it's Delia's Delia's was a popular uh catalog magazine within the 90s I I think this one here isn't from Delius. This is from, I think, like Seventeen Magazine or something like that. I could be wrong on that. But um, uh, what Delius did and specifically was kind of focus on these very kind of dynamic shots, you know, um, full length kind of body shots or slightly cropped of some sort, you know, something that was a little bit more youthful as opposed to, you know, kind of the standard here, like what you see. I believe this is... um a catalog from Sears or JCPenney. Um, and so uh, some more common motifs that you would often find, bold typefaces like uh, Ikea is utilizing here, 
in what, one of the pages from their catalog um, to call attention to maybe it's a, maybe it's a sale or something that's going on or you know it's a headline and you want to call attention to that so you would use a very bold striking sans serif typeface for that and then you've got product numbering which is um a pop popular throughout catalogs I'm, i don't know uh if you know this kind of serves a purpose other than just kind of being a stylistic choice nowadays but um you know having like uh you know having all of these alphabetized you know you would pick up the phone call say like hey i'm interested in product number so and so and so um, that was uh, kind of where product numbering kind of started from. And so uh, then we've got tables here. And so um, you can see kind of on the left of this right here, we've got like um, we've got the headline and then we've got the you've got pricing right here. It's really small and I can't zoom in. So I'm sorry. And I'm blocking it, too. So let me see if I can uh, move my screen out the way for y'all. Yeah. So right here we've got. Um, you know, tables, which is which is really good for kind of large, um, large text blocks of information. So from like your headline to your description to um, your price, or maybe you had variations of some sort like that. And so that's where you would see um, a lot of these come into play as far as kind of like tables within catalogs. Now we I'm going to get into more um, examples of vintage 90s shopping catalogs. And so these are just some of the some of the catalogs that were kind of more popular throughout the 90s also. And so um, I, th I believe these are from Sears, uh, Inter, in Inter Toys here. East, we've got an East Bay ad here. Um, I'm not sure where this is from. Uh, this could be from, I want to say like, uh, I don't know, actually, maybe like Mecca of some sort. I know this is from Delius because you know, we've got like um, we've got like the full body kind of image, kind of dynamic posing, posing often. Um, you see what Delius does is they'll like accompany it with a, instead of just being one model, it'll be pairs. And so um, they do like these groupings of models, uh, you know, but, you know, full body in frame and Delius is kind of, you know, renowned or just kind of known for that. And so all of these are Delia's. Then we've got kind of an alloy cover here. And so um, these are just like uh, some different some different catalog pages or catalog designs from the '90s. So how how are y'all feeling about these? What do y'all what do y'all think about these? A great inspo. Yeah, this is yeah I, I I love this type of stuff. This this is my bread and butter right here. How many of y'all was 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 around from uh for Delia's design studio says, where did you dig these in the, in the document? I'll, I'll, I'll cite my sources and stuff. So you'll be able to, if you really want to dig further, I'll, I'll cite the sources and stuff. So you can go and check out all the websites in different places where I've kind of pulled kind of research and inspo from Adam Mays says they're very collective, like a collage. Yeah. And so moving on to the next one, uh, we've got, I don't know where these are from. Um, I know this is from 17 magazine. Um, this one is from uh, Ikea, and then I believe this one is from like, uh, oh, this one is from Toys R Us. This one is from Delia's also. Then we've got some Radio Shack ads right here. I'm, I'm going to assume all of these are Radio Shack. TT says, those are sick. I like the lettering slash numbering for different items. I definitely could have utilized that in my submission. Yeah, that's that's one of the common motifs. Very, very fun. It's, it's fun to play around with this this type of aesthetic. In this type of look and it makes me it makes me think about the designers back then you know when they were actually doing this stuff you know i don't i don't i, I doubt that they knew that we would be pulling you know inspiration from all of this stuff today um and looking at this stuff as as if it's uh inspiring they're probably just like oh yeah we've got a revision on this page and then someone sends them a microsoft word document and they've got to squeeze in like just way more copy that was than what was initially there so they're just kind of just ready to be done with making all of these things but yeah how many of y'all had how many how many of y'all uh had like lava lamps growing up i saw this and i was like yeah i had, I had a little lava lamp growing up kind of cool and then we got um what's next here i just kind of found a bunch of inspiration and stuff and so this is what i was able to find and so these are some more kind of i want to i wouldn't say like up to date but more modern sort of uh takes on catalog design and stuff and so i believe this design here um is from 
I want to say uh, Vanity, a clothing brand of some sort. I don't think that this was a page within a catalog necessarily, but um, they did pull some inspiration. You know, um, they've got kind of full body posing and images here. Um, they also have the, I can't tell if they have the products numbered and whatnot, but it, it, it looks like it looks like they do. But um, I know one thing that I often saw when doing my research uh for these for like catalogs and stuff a lot of the kind of archive archival pages they would have like um these scans of different catalog pages and you know it's they're pages that people have owned you know and they just decided to scan it in and just upload it and so oftentimes you would find that um there are a lot of like circles people are circling things and saying like uh you know just to be like oh like this is the one i want i want this item here or something like that. So people would often circle things or scribble on top of different pages and stuff, you know, to, you know, kind of bookmark them for later, just kind of add it to their wish list or something. And so you can kind of see what vanity does is kind of similar to that. And um, I, I think this is a kind of mock ad for Yeezy, um, for Yeezy Gap. I'm not sure if this is real, but um, you can kind of see they kind of play off of that as well um with this design if anybody knows the person that designed this uh please do let me know i'll credit them in this in the document as well but um i have these two other designers here and uh i tried to make sure that everyone was credited but you know then you've got um we've got some spreads from one of tyler the creator's drops and then we've got also uh i believe these are from i want to say haran preston so this uh, this one is from Haran Preston as well as this one over here. And so, um, sorry. So both of these are from Haran Preston, but yeah. What y'all, what y'all think of these, what type of fonts were most used for this style? Um, I'm not too sure exactly. I would say, um, probably sans serif. It's, it's legible, um, easy to, easy to read. But as far as, uh, ex an exact typeface, I can't be too sure. I would say probably the the typefaces that would be used within kind of like each brand's kind of style guide so i'm sure sears has their own style guide that they use for their body copy headlines and stuff like that um jc penny all of those brands so they probably just aligned with what was correct within their style guides and stuff and so yeah so what do you what do y'all think about these how are we feeling about these cool all right y'all ready to move on to the to the next slide Adam A says there's a lot of similar color palettes within these examples. Creamy uh, background color. Yeah, that uh, I feel like for the newer ones, um, the ones that are more modern, I feel like that could be a more uh, I feel like that approach is definitely intentional. But for the older ones, I think it could just be because of age. And but, um, you know, we use the kind of cream color backgrounds as a node to that to kind of make things feel and look a little bit more vintage. All right, moving on. Uh, so next up, we've got some brands prevalent within the 90s utilizing catalogs. And so the curse was good. And so we've got, um, hold up, let me get my, let me get this right up over here real quick so I can see the chat. I can't see what y'all are saying all the time. Let me see. Right. There we go. Wait, actually, that kind of messed it up. My bad, y'all. Let me get the, let me get the chat right real quick so I can see y'all, boy. Okay, got it. Perfect. Yeah, and so we've got some brands prevalent within the 90s utilizing catalogs. So East Bay had their own catalog, uh, Delia's, Sears, um, KB Toys, uh, Wet Seals, Fat Farm, JCPenney. These are all just brands that just kind of utilized catalogs as a way to kind of increase their bottom line. And so, um, yeah, how, how, many of these, uh, how many of these brands stick out to you? What brands stick out to you? Um, did you guys kind of have any of these catalogs growing up i know I, I mentioned that i had east bay i used to get the east bay catalogs you know just on the regular jc pennies i'm not too sure of maybe radio shack all right bet let's go on to the next slides all right now i'm gonna highlight some ads in marketing uh you know just kind of you know ads that are uh from brands often featured within retail catalogs and so these are some brands that didn't necessarily have their own catalog but you know you would see these um, brands recurring within catalogs so we've got kind of like a fila ad here by Foot Locker within the bottom left corner so you know this would would have probably been in a Foot Locker catalog or something like that um, 
Nintendo, uh, this probably would have been in like, I don't know, like a, like some sort of gaming catalog, maybe like Radio Shack or something like that. Um, I'm not sure about like uh, Echo Unlimited um, or, uh, but this is a Gap, this is a Gap, uh, sorry, but this is a Gap uh, ad here that would, you know, would be featured in a Gap catalog. So what's, what's standing out to you guys about, um, about these ads here? Do you guys have a favorite? I would probably say my favorite, my favorite ad here is definitely going to be the, I feel like I'm biased when it comes to anything dealing with like Nintendo, Sega, like whatever. So like, I got to go with this one. Like this is just a fire ad altogether. That uh, TT says that that top left nappy one was also on my mood board for this project. Okay, yeah, yeah, you you locked in, you locked in. Okay, uh, UT Curse says the blue one, the nappy one. Yeah, the game, uh, John 3K says the Game Boy one always stands out to me for real. Same, bro. Asno says uh, the colors in these stand out more. T Curse says sick. Adam A says I like how the models bring the clothes to life. Yeah, and like um, in this Foot Locker one here, you know, um, you know, I feel like they're all kind of utilizing some sort of uh kind of dynamic posing like this is this is a very unconventional angle i would i would say you know what i mean i feel like you know and even this in this gap one it's like what is this dude doing you know what i mean like what kind of pose is that um i really like the nappy one um the echo unlimited ones are like really chill but definitely the um this one in the top right corner here i feel like it's a lot more realistic of what would have been in like maybe a radio shack catalog and I feel like kind of once you uh, get into this style here of um, kind of like advertising within catalogs, you kind of start to see, you see some uh, similarities between this and what Nike was doing in like all of their old ads of just like big, bold, sans serif typefaces, just extremely chunky and just throwing it at the top, you know, image in the center of some sort or product in the center and then just having like some body copy or uh, some descriptive text at the bottom. All right, moving on. Moving on next, we got some videos. And so uh, this one is, and these are these videos are just to talk about brands, you know, that didn't necessarily have their own catalog, but um, were often featured in catalogs. So I just kind of wanted to share some of the advertising that was kind of floating around back then. And let me turn up this audio for y'all. All right. Lawrence Blackman here with my main man, Michael Jordan. Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Is it the vicious stunts? No, Mars. Is it the haircut? No, Mars. Is it the shoes? No, Mars. Is it the extra long shorts? No, Mars. Is the shoes it, right? Is it the short socks? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. shoes. You sure it's not the shoes? I'm sure, Mars. What about the shoes? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes. Yeah, that one is a classic for sure. All right, next up we got um an ad from a uh, Tommy Hilfiger. So let's check it out. Take ten. Uh, two trap, two dog. I need color. One or three, David. Take three. Uh, no, got that off. It's wrong. No cut. Cut. No gray. Take twenty-two. What do you want me to do? Change? Wardrobe. One or three, David. Take forty. Uh, give me Tommy jeans. I need color and light. Tommy jeans make a scene. So that was that was Tommy, Tommy jeans, Tommy Hill figure. Um, let's see the next one. Next up, we've got a uh, an ad from Game Boy. This is from Game Boy's debut, which I believe was around like 1990. You haven't been Get a job. That's crazy. How many how many of y'all had the Game Boy? How many of y'all had a Game Boy color? PT says Vans recently dropped a skate ad in a similar visual style with kids on the subway. Pretty dope. Yeah, I feel like a lot of brands like uh like to kind of pay homage to kind of, you know, stuff like this. Cole says, Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I ran through like three Game Boys when I was a kid, bro. Adam uh Adam May says, not me, I had a Nintendo DS. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next. And so next is live critique, the feedback session. Um, before we jump into the feedback session, uh, I did, I low key wanted to do like a, like a speed segment of some sort where we just kind of like play a game or something like that. 
or would, would y'all would y'all like that or do y'all want to jump straight into the feedback okay bet 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 i'm gonna get i'm gonna get it set up let's take a quick quick little uh quick little break real quick i'll be right back